Can I interest you in anything? Bone broth for the little one. Oh, well, you're in luck. I just took down a Gringer, so there's plenty. Can I interest you in a porringer of broth as well? Just the one. You want some soup? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the bone broth from The Mandalorian, for which we're gonna need some bones. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find out much more on what a Gringer is outside of the Star Wars Wikipedia, so we're just gonna make a nice, sippable bone broth from beef bones. And speaking of things that are nice and sippable, today's sponsor is Trade Coffee, a personalized coffee subscription service of which I am a huge fan. They've got this really cool coffee personalization quiz that picks the perfect coffee rotation for you from a variety of the nation's best roasters. And now I have partnered with Trade Coffee for a magic ticket sweeps, where you could win a trip for two to New York, a tour of my studio, Coffee With Me, and an insider roaster tour. More details on that at the end of the episode. For now, we've got a bone to pick, so to speak. You don't have to do this, but I personally like to clean all the marrow out of the bones that I can. I find that it gives the broth kind of an off metallic taste, but no matter what you do with your marrow, we're going to arrange the bones on racks set in rim baking sheets, drizzle with a little bit of oil to assist in browning, and roast these guys at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes to one hour until they're deeply brown and have given up much of their fat. This is also both going to darken the color of the broth and deepen its flavor. All in all, I've got about 10 pounds of bones here for two batches of broth. We want about a pound of bones per quart of water. And in addition to repeatedly doing this hand gesture, you're going to want some aromatic vegetables. All the usual stock suspects will suffice. But I'm also going to add a leek, which have notoriously dirty interiors, so I'm going to rinse this out thoroughly every single layer, chop off the bits at the end so they will more easily fit in the pot, and that's pretty much it. The only other thing you're going to need is, of course, a big ol' stock pot. The bigger and narrower, the better. You're going to want to make a big batch of this stuff, and you're going to want it to evaporate as little as possible. So I'm just dropping in all of our aromatic- ow, ow. Ow. No more air chopping stuff today. But I'm also going to drop in a halved head of garlic, a handful of black peppercorns, a couple dried or preferably fresh bay leaves, and of course our quote unquote gringer bones. As many as can comfortably fit in the pot. By the way, make sure you're using high quality bones from a butcher you trust, or at least from a gringer that you've taken down yourself. So the next step, as you might imagine, is to cover these bones with water and commence to cooking. But one essential ingredient we must add is apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons worth, which is going to act as a solvent to pull calcium and other delicious nutritious minerals out of our bones. And now it's time to bring this mixture to and keep it at a bare simmer. As the old French proverb goes, to make a good soup the pot must only simmer or smile. Not really sure what that means, but during the first hour of cooking we're going to skim off any scum that floats to the top of the broth. Which isn't scum at all, it's just denatured proteins which are harmless and flavorless but they can make the broth go cloudy. And now for the easiest slash hardest part of making bone broth, letting it simmer for 24 to 48 hours. Hours. Don't want to tend to a bubbling cauldron for two days? Well, if you have a pressure cooker, you're in luck. We're going to add all the same ingredients to the pot, but due to its higher heat and shorter cooking time, we're going to need some help getting as much collagen and gelatin into our broth so it gels. So our secret weapon is going to be chicken feet, which are basically just pure fat and connective tissue. We're just going to trim the claws off five or six chicken feet, add them to the pot, and be sure to hang on to those chicken claws because they're excellent for freaking out your girlfriend. Ew! Ugh! Oh, stop! <laughs> That's so this is the thumb right here. <laughs> this sound is so... What, this? <laughs> hey, look, I can make a wave. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's some good, clean fun. Anywho, we are likewise filling our pressure cooker pot to its max capacity, adding a wee bit of apple cider vinegar, shutting down and firing up to high pressure for 60 minutes, or as many as four hours if you really want to make some liquid beef. Once that's done, you ideally want to let the pressure release naturally, but I'm a little short on time. Only difference that's going to make is that my broth is going to be a little bit more cloudy. We are then going to fish out the solids for easier straining and then strain, preferably through a cheesecloth, but at least a fine mesh strainer before portioning, rapidly chilling in an ice bath, and and refrigerating. And there you have it, the quickest and easiest bone broth that is currently technologically possible. But will it gel? That is the question. We will find out later because we've still got our stovetop broth to finish up. The first thing we've got to do is 
defat the broth. So I'm just gonna skim the very thick layer of fat that's formed on the top of the broth. And now it's time to see if we did our job right. I'm gonna grab a small sample of the broth and refrigerate it for one hour, after which time, drum roll please, it should have completely jellified. This is a very good thing. It means that we've extracted a ton of gelatin from the beef bones. This, along with the collagen and all the dissolved connective tissue, is not only nutritious and good for you, it adds a ton of flavor and body and unctuous mouthfeel to soups, stews, and sauces. But in its simplest form, bone broth is served on its lonesome. If you want a very nice, clean broth with no particulate, you can optionally filter it through cheesecloth or even a coffee filter. And especially this time of year, it makes an excellent meal replacement on the go breakfast or even late afternoon energy booster. And with nothing but a little bit of salt for flavor, it's not only very tasty, it's very good for you. It's high in protein, calcium, vitamins, nutrients, healthy fats, amino acids, and supposedly it's very good for your skin, your joints, and your gut health. But what do you say we zhuzh it up a little? And this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to make some savory whipped cream. I've got one cup of heavy cream here to which I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of fresh chopped dill and a couple generous pinches of kosher salt, tiny whisk until homogenous, and then whip using your your favorite method. I'm going with a CO2 dispenser. All you gotta do with this guy is add your CO2 cartridge and shake a couple times to adjust the whipped cream's consistency. And yes, this beverage got some mixed reactions on Instagram. And I'll admit, looking at it, I was pretty skeptical myself. It's like a Wiley Dufresne trick savory version of hot apple cider. But after just one brave sip, my entire world was turned upside down. This is really, truly, actually delicious. I mean, listen to my unfettered reaction. This is genuinely good. Holy sh**. <laughs> and I mean it guys, it's good. But bone broth, like any broth, has myriad culinary applications. My favorite of which is probably the Italian classic tortellini and brodo. I'm gonna start with a pat of butter in the bottom of my serving bowl, lightly season my nice hot broth, pour out a little sample to taste to make sure that it's seasoned correctly. Then I'm gonna bring out my freshly cooked al dente four cheese tortellini, dump them right into the bowl, top of the broth, and you could stop there. But some lovely toppings for this dish include a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg, freshly grated Parmesan, lemon zest, fried garlic chips, finely minced chives, any number of savory, soupy toppings. And this has got to be one of my absolute favorite dishes of all time. And with rich, homemade, unctuous bone broth, I mean, that's no moon. It's a space station. I know that quote doesn't really work here, but whatever. Now, in the cantina on the forest planet of Sorgan, they were serving what looked like udon noodles, which are also going to play real nice with our bone broth, especially if we top it with things like some spicy chili oil, maybe a little drizzle of sesame oil, and some chopped green onions that I've forgot to buy. This also is a delicious application of our bone broth, and it will obviously work wonders in any soup, stew, or sauce you can dream up, but if you want to go one step further, we can turn our bone broth into demi-glass, aka the secret ingredient that makes food in restaurants taste so good. We're going to start with maybe two quarts of bone broth that we're going to place in our widest stock pot. I say wide this time because we want to encourage evaporation. We're also going to add two or three tablespoons of tomato paste and one cup of dry red wine. We're then going to bring this guy up to a simmer and let him reduced by as much as 75%, until all that remains is an impossibly rich, thick, syrupy sauce. Now, demi-glace is traditionally made with veal bones, but trust me, your bone broth is going to work just fine in a pinch. Once it is thick enough to coat the back of a spork, it's time to divvy it up and store it for current and future applications. First, we're going to set it aside and let it cool off a bit, and then divide it into portions. You could just pour it into a bread pan and let it solidify in the fridge and then cut it up into pieces, but I like using a cupcake tin, because then you end up with these cute little pucks of pure unabashed flavor. You can then wrap these in plastic wrap and tin foil or vacuum seal them and keep them in the freezer for up to six months where they lie in wait, ready to add incredible flavor and richness to any number of savory dishes, maybe the most transformative of which is the pan sauce. I'm just going to sear a couple steaks and deglaze the pan with one portion and a little red wine for a rich, sticky, unctuous pan sauce that is simply without rival. But after the whipped cream idea, I was still feeling inventive and I thought, what if we combined all of these dishes into one? Tortellini and udon bone broth soup with demi-glace, chives, parmesan, chili oil, nutmeg, lemon zest, and savory dill whipped cream. And I gotta say, I, I didn't hate it. After one or two bites, I thought I was onto something, but then I tried tortellini, udon, and whipped cream in one bite and kind of broke my brain a little bit. Experimentation is fun and all, but I don't know, let's keep this 
taste of the classics. I am not stoned enough for this. I'm just high on coffee. Speaking of which, this episode was sponsored by Trade Coffee, with whom I have partnered up for a magic ticket sweeps where you could win a trip for two to New York to hang out and drink coffee with me. Here's how it works. Take the trade quiz to get matched to coffee recommendations based on your taste preferences. Then use promo code BABISH at checkout by December 20th to enter for a chance to win. The winner is going to be selected in January and will receive their magic ticket by mail. So click the link in the video description below or head to drinktrade.com slash babish. At the very least, you're going to be matched with some really amazing coffees that you're going to love, starting with 30% off and free shipping on your first bag. And at the very most, you could find yourself on your way to New York City to hang out and drink coffee with little old me. Trade Coffee offers huge variety, robust personalization, and an almost unfair level of convenience. So I hope you guys give it a try, enjoy, and maybe I'll be seeing you here in New York City.